So amoebiasis is uh, one of the most common uh, comorbidity among HIV infected individuals in Japan. So start. Uh, first, is so uh, why amoebiasis among HIV infected individuals? So amoebiasis is caused by entamoeba histolytica, and uh, it has two forms, cyst form and trophozoite form. So, so, we, oh. so cyst form will be ingested by orally and uh, go to the end of cecum, and it will hatching into trophozoite. And trophozoite will make a diseases by the invasion of intestinal epithelial cells, like an, uh, colitis, and sometimes make an, uh, liver cells. So here is uh, disease forms of amoebiasis. Our uh, first one is asymptomatic chronic infection, and the colitis, this is a dysentery, blood distills, and uh, sometimes disseminated, uh, most often uh, liver cells sometimes critical. But a more important thing here is most of them are asymptomatic. The, this asymptomatic chronic infection is very important in my talk. And here is an epidemiology in Japan from 2000 to 2013. You can see this is an amoebiasis uh, annual reported cases of invasive, symptomatic cases of amoebiasis, you can see it is increasing. And a more important thing in this slide is most of the cases are domestic infection, the bruber. Domestic infection means they are infected with entamoeba histolytica inside of Japan. They are infected within Japan, not from the other European countries. So this is a Japanese situation. And this is a data of, uh, very old data of our group. Uh, we compared patient characteristics, age, sex, and other comorbidity with amoebiasis between amoebic colitis and no amoebic colitis. So important thing in this slide is uh, among maybe colitis patients, very high ratio of co-infection of HIV-1, Hep B, and syphilis. You can see 57 negatives, 2.0, and 13, and 1.6, and 31, and 2.3. So 67.4% of the amoeba cases are HIV infected. So amoebiasis is spreading as a sexually transmitted infection in Japan. And uh, next data is an, uh, a little bit old data from us. Uh, another assessment of the prevalence is uh, we use a uh, zero prevalence. This is the zero prevalence data of the previous uh, reports from many countries. For example, in uh, HIV MSM zero prevalence in Australia and uh, in Taiwan is in the 5.1 and 11.2. Uh, and on the other hand, in Africa, so the living, people living in the, uh, this kind of developing country is very high. And our cohort, you can see HIV positive uh, people among, uh, uh, in Tokyo is in uh, 21.3, as high uh, as uh, the Egypt and the South Africa. And uh, another example, this is an uh, uh, applicant's visitors to uh, voluntary counseling testing center. Uh, they are worried about an HIV infection and a check. So voluntary checking facility, this was 2.6%. So very high cell prevalence among HIV infected individuals. So 
Uh, this is a summary of the, uh, the so far. Amoebiasis is a protozoal infection caused by entamoeba histolytica. Transmission occurs by oral ingestion of cystic form, and invasive diseases are caused by trophozoid forms. Annual reported cases of symptomatic invasive amoebiasis are increasing in recent two decades. Amoebiasis is spreading as a sexually transmitted infection. Cero prevalence of e historica among HIV-1 in Japan is as high as that among people living in developing countries. Very prevalent comorbidity. And uh, next, uh, I want to decrease them uh, by something. So uh, this is a cero prevalence data. So uh, HIV positive individuals, very high, 21.3. And in detail, so uh, 277 among 1,303, 21.3%. And more interesting is here. So this is the data of the among individuals without past history of amoebiasis. So I want to say 70.4%. 195 among 277 of seropositive individuals does not have past history of amoebiasis. Very interesting why they are seropositive. And this is another cross-sectional data of us. Uh, we check and the frequency of asymptomatic chronic infection of entamoeba hysteritica from colonoscopy data of asymptomatic HIV-1 infected individuals. So we collected 71 asymptomatic but HIV-1 infected individuals and check the frequency of the entamoeba histolytica among them. So we identified eight of 71. Uh, I mean, 11.3% of asymptomatically HIV infected individuals had or maybe colitis. There are no symptoms, but can identify the ulcer in the large intestine like this. So this is the end of Sika. Uh, this is the cecum, and you can see an ulcer. And from the biopsy on the surface of the intestine, you can see an, uh, these kind, these uh, uh, oh, blue black is uh, the amoeba. So you can find an amoeba accidentally. And, uh, more, uh, so, and then uh, you see an antibody result. So the, among antibody positives at the colonoscopy, seven among 18 had the diseases, and the negatives, only one from the 53 had the diseases by entamoeba histolytica. So I want to say asymptomatically, a historical seropositive individuals very frequently have the diseases by the colonoscopy. So this is a schema of the uh, transmission route of entamoeba histolytica in developing countries and in our countries. This is a schema for the in developing countries. So infected people uh, contaminate the or environment with a cyst form, and this will spread the people. So the reservoir target for the epidemiology is here, environment. So clean water and clean food will be needed for the prevention of the epidemiological control of the e historical infection. On the other hand, this is a schema for the sexually transmitted e historical infection in Japan. So infected person to person to person. So reservoir is not environment. Infected person is the reservoir. And from our data, they are frequently asymptomatic, but antibody positive, and you can find an ulcer by the colonoscopy. This is a um, uh, this is uh, my uh, so main point, and uh, this is a possible strategy for epidemiological control for sexually transmitted entamoeba histolytica infection. So screening by serum antibody, 
If antibody positive, uh, you have to do a colonoscopy and uh, you find a colonic ulcer, so you treat them. So screening of the asymptomatic people is very important for the epidemiological, con uh, epidemiological control. So despite of high seroprevalence of e histolytica among HIV-1 infected individuals, 70% were asymptomatic as well as lack of past history of amoebiasis. And 39% of asymptomatically seropositive individuals have amoebic ulcers identified by colonoscopy. Asymptomatically ehistorical infected individuals are the main infection source, which is target for the epidemiological control of sexually transmitted ehistorical infections. And uh, uh, we want to do it, but uh, we have some difficulties uh, to do that. So first one question is, in, uh, uh, who is the target for the screening? So the, in the general people, seroprevalence of the e histolytica is not so high, so this is a sexually transmitted infection. So uh, it is a very, very important thing. And the second is how to diagnose uh, entamoeba histolytica. So colonoscopy is an, uh, uh, very expensive and uh, sometimes invasive, and uh, how to treat them. So first one, so place to screen. So HIV infected individuals, of course, they are target for the screening, I think. And but not only HIV infected, so this is a seroprevalence data of STI, sexually transmitted infections, at voluntary counseling and testing center in Tokyo, Japan. So at this center, HIV seropositivity is uh, 0 0.34, and the RPR and the TPHA, this is a syphilis serology, 2.11 and uh, 6.82. This is a current infection of the syphilis. And uh, the urine test and the chlamydia and the gonor here. And amoebiasis. So the, we use a uh, stock sample and the check and uh, seropositivity. So uh, positivity of the entamoeba histolytica, you can find a uh, much higher seroprevalence than HIV-1, and it's the same level as an uh, RPL. So I think, so uh, so far, uh, we don't have a screening test of the H uh, entamoeba histolytica infection in VCT center, but in the future, I think uh, we had better introduce a uh, serological test for the screening test. So VCT center and uh, STI clinics maybe uh, should be a target for the screening. And next is diagnosis. So how to diagnose? This is uh, uh, the table from the review paper uh, so showing that diagnosis of e histolytica by stool sampling. For the colitis patients, symptom symptomatic patients, so antigen testing is very high sensitivity to diagnose an entamoeba histolytica, but the asymptomatic carrier it is very low sensitivity. It is very difficult to diagnose without uh, colonoscopy uh, so far. And uh, this is our uh, data uh, and a new data uh, of the colonoscopy and the uh, stool sampling. Uh, this is a, li di di uh, a little bit different, but uh, the method. So stool or intestinal fluid, microscopy, PCR, the histopathology by stool sample or colonoscopy. So you can find that uh, PCR is very high sensitivity, but very expensive. And uh, it, it's very interesting, so even by histopathology, so biopsy sample, it is difficult to diagnose the asymptomatic chronic infection of the e-histolytica. So histopathology often fail to identify e-histolytica. So in the future study, uh, we have to uh, invent a new diagnostic method, and uh, this is my research theme, another research theme here. And how to treat. This is the last one. So uh, this is a treatment guideline for e histolytica infection. Uh, um, so for the invasive diseases, 
metronidazole and paramycin is recommended. On the other hand, asymptomatic carrier, so paramycin monotherapy is recommended. But, so this is uh, uh, one case report from the, uh, the European country. So this case is a 66-year-old male Caucasian, asymptomatic, but he was diagnosed as e histological infection at colonoscopy uh, for cancer screening. Uh, it is not clear, but uh, you can find an ulcer. So you can find an ulcer, but he's asymptomatic. Clinician can choose invasive disease or asymptomatic carrier. And they chose. He was successfully uh, treated by metronidazole and paromycin. So this case is maybe asymptomatic carrier, but uh, if you see, the clinician sees the ulcer in the large intestine, oh, they think invasive diseases. So is diagnosis of this case invasive amoebiasis or asymptomatic carrier? We don't have an answer. And uh, this is our experience. So two cases, 43-year-old male Japanese, so very mild symptoms and the diagnosis of e-hysteretical infection at colonoscopy due to FOB positive result, this is a cancer screening. So uh, you find an ulcer in the large intestine, but he has an allergy to the metronidazole. We treat them paromycin monotherapy, but uh, we successfully treat him with paromycin monotherapy without metronidazole. In the same case, this is a uh, wife of our patient. Uh, she was asymptomatic, but uh, for the screening, because uh, his, uh, his hus her husband had a disease we did in a colonoscopy, we found an uh, ulcer in the large intestine. But she wanted to treat it by the paramount chemotherapy because it was successful. So the, again, uh, we have a successful treatment for the very the visible ulcers by the entamoeba hysteritica. So summary. So uh, we, we have to do a screening and a diagnosis and treatment is very important for the epidemiological control for the uh, sexually transmitted e histological infection. But uh, we have to do something before them. So where to do screen and how to diagnose and we have to invent a new diagnostic method in a comparable sensitivity to PCR. And the last one is a luminal agent or prior metronidazole needed, so summary. A target population for antibody screening tests for e histological infection should be clarified. HIV, MSM, commercial sex worker, and other targets. And the more sensitive and inexpensive and the easier diagnostic method for e histological infection should be invented. Treatment for asymptomatically infected individuals who have visible ulcer uh, by colonoscopy should be clarified by a proof of concept study, I think. Thank you for the kind attention for my presentation. Thank, thank you, uh, Dr. Watanabe.